Okay, we in the last video we finished um, finalizing and saving our animation. We got through all our keyframes and we put them all the desktop here. We organize them all into assignment five. We have our PSD file, which you see here, which gives us all the assets and tools to build every keyframe. And then we saved our individual keyframes as JPEG separately. My finished animation ended up taking 20 keyframes. And then using gifmaker.me, we made a GIF, which just puts the keyframes in a specific order with a certain amount of time for each keyframe. And it looks a little choppy. This is, I think, two frames per second, 500 milliseconds per frame. But it works. It tells the story. Now, the next part is we need to make a refined storyboard. So if we look at the assignment, Let's get back to assignment sheets, where we post our assignment five. You'll see in the examples, we have our rough storyboard, we have our final animation, but we also need to have a refined storyboard so that you can include it, all this work in a print portfolio. So not only do we have our rough and our final animation, but now we have to pick nine frames from our final animation and lay them out very cleanly so that they tell the story. So for that, I go to my keyframes and I want to identify what I think is the middle, the center moment of my animation. And using your sketch is a good, a good, uh, guiding principle for this, because this kind of tells the story like a comic book. But I have a few panels that are very similar to my middle frame. So I want to pick the one that I think kind of sells it the best. And I'm going to pick number five here, because the clouds are kind of darkest there. So. I'm going to indicate that one. I'm going to open that up in PhotoP. So I can close. I've already saved the PSD. Now I'm going to open from my computer, from my keyframes, the one that I think will be in the middle of my refined storyboard. Now, I'm just noticing right here, I have that little part that needs to be cut off. Because this is for print, not just screen resolution, you want this to be really clean. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to crop it. So I don't have that little glitch area anymore. showing you cropping it down so it's nice and clean because I want a clean square. Okay, now I can grow the space around this image. So what I want to do is grow enough paper around it so I can fit my other keyframes. But first I'm going to use my, my uh, move tool and my ruler guides to put a guide on each side of this cropped image. Now I can go to Image, Canvas Size. And what I'm going to do is grow it from the middle. And right now, because I cropped it, it's a really weird size. It's 7 by uh, 0.74, 7.74. So I want it to be 8 by 8. So I need to go to image size. And 
I had 8 by 8 by 150. Now I've got 7.74 by 150. What I want to do is not resample it. So it keeps the exact same pixels, but I want to force it to be 8 by 8 inches. And that changes my resolution to just a little bit less, and that's fine. Okay, but now when I go to canvas size, it is 8 by 8 inches, or very, very close. It's a little annoying that it's 8.01. Let's see if I can fix that in image size. Probably not just because of the dots per inch. Okay, now I go to canvas size and I'm going to make it 30 inches wide and 40 inches tall, growing from the middle. Right? And you can see where I need to cut it off. This is the refined storyboard is all about laying it out and making it a clean presentation. Okay, the checkerboard makes it a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to fill it with middle gray at 100%. And then I'm going to move that behind my middle layer. Now, using your rulers, you can see the pixel dimensions here. Actually, a better tool is the grid. So you're going to go to um, View, Show, Grid, which you can toggle on and off with um, with Command Apostrophe. And we're going to put a new guide. One, two, three, four, five grid spaces on all sides. And because the grid disappears when I turn on the background, I'm going to fill that with white instead of gray. That's a weird thing that's happening in Photo P. So I want to be able to see the grid. There we go. So you see I'm five squares out from the side there. I want to be five squares out from the top. One, two, three, four, five. I want to be five squares from this side. One, two, three, four, five. And five squares from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Give you a headache. So now I can turn off those guides or the grid, and I have placement for my other panels. So then I go to my keyframes and I go, well, I know I want a first panel. And let's see, maybe it'll be this one. So I can drag and drop it in. And I have to do kind of the extra step of cropping it to match, right? So I bring it in, I rasterize it. And you won't have to do that because you wouldn't, unless you have a little glitch on the side of your animation, like I did. So I've cut it to be the exact right size. And now I move that with the move tool having auto select not checked. And I it will nest right into the right layout. So this is just to practice good layout. So you can tell the story. Now the next frame I want, let's see, maybe this one. I can always go back to my sketch and look. 
clouds need to start gathering. So yeah, this one's a good one. Bring it in. Do that annoying extra step of cropping it just a tiny bit. Rasterize it. The guides are great for getting everything uniform. So this is about using grids and guides for layout. Canvas size is the only way to actually center something exactly instead of just eyeballing it. And that's a really helpful skill to have for layout. There we go. So already we see a pretty big shift starting to, to happen. So then I think I want this one. And I continue. Now you only do this once you know what your final keyframes are. But once you know, you can choose from any of those keyframes you want because you just want it to tell the story well. Because the storyboard is a different delivery device for your idea than the animation is. Oh, I have to rasterize it before I can trim it. And so you want to make sure your panels are 8 by 8 inches, and you're going to put them onto a field that is 30 by 40 inches, so you have plenty of room to work. And then you use the guides with five of the grid squares in between. These are the gutters, and that will give you perfect layout. And then you're trying to tell the story pretty clearly. And you can use your arrow keys to just nudge, move them just very slight amounts. So this is laying out your refined storyboard. Paying a lot of attention to how things line up. This is kind of the technical part. And when it's all nice and clean, it gives a good print rendition of your animation. And you'll discover stuff about it. So that builds up pretty darn quickly. But I think that works. Because I stay there for a while anyway. So now maybe I'll take number seven and push it in, where the ice looks a little bit more solid. And maybe I'll decide to, to swap this one with, yeah, like 4C instead. And so if I do that, because they're all on different layers, you have this kind of control. You still want to crop it down, or I want to crop it down. Because this will print at a print resolution. It's the one thing we're making this semester that's at full print resolution. Because it's of all of these smaller components that are at screen resolution. So when you add them all up, you have enough for good quality printing. 